Hey everybody, Igles Luigi here and welcome to my tutorial for my best rendering settings on Movie Studio Platinum 13 which is currently on Steam for the Steam sales which ends on the 5th of July and I picked this up last year, I have over 300 hours of um, rendering done on it but I just want to show you my rendering settings that I use for my videos because before this I was using Camtasia Studio 8 that was alright but I can only do 30 frames per second so these are my HD 1080p 60 frame per second settings. I want you to come over to the screen bit. Now I've always go to this little project video properties, click on that and I've always created a template called YouTube 1080p 6 frame per second and all we want to do is copy this bit that I have already. Um, so I have it in the width, the height, so it's all 1080p, the frame rate is 60 and I always tick this bo box, keep it on best uh, bend field keep the same and you want to take this box at the bottom saying start all new project with these settings click apply um, you can do audio which I kept here and that's about it and then once that's done you click OK once you load this back up you won't have to go here and change that manually because this template will be saved that template will always be here as you can see the project is in the 1080 format and that's 60 frames per second. Now when I'm gonna get my clip, the Crash Bandicoot one, now remember this is on a PS1 emulator. The PlayStation was on a 4x9 screen, so it wasn't designed to be for the actual 1080p re resolution. So you will get black boxes around the side, but if you're doing a game, like a modern game that can support the 1080p functions and the widescreen, then it will fill the box. But normally you can stretch this out to fit it, and then what you wanna do, and um, what I recommend with every product Project that you do on every single clip is right click onto the actual video bit, click on the properties, and then you want to untick the maintain aspects ratio and disable resample. And then watch the screen here. And once I click OK, my Crash Bandicoot game is stretched out. But then, what I also like to do, as it is a PlayStation 1 game, and I recorded this on a PS1 emulator, so the game already has textures, it has um, filters it has shaders on to enhance it to get rid of all the um, pixelated lines but what i also like to do in this one is go into video effects and go on to sharpen and just bring the default over and then what i like to do is you can see the massive difference already i like to bring that sharpness all the way down so it, it clears it up but that's all i do for the um, playstation 1 games i don't really mess around with much uh, video effects another feature as well you have the little box here that says best audio this is the preview quality and what I normally do when I'm editing, I put the preview to the auto so I can edit without having the thing to lag. If it's a really big file, if it's a really big project, I don't want the screen to lag out, I want it to be smooth. This doesn't affect the um, outcome of the rendering, this is just a preview box so you can go ahead and mess around with it. But don't assume that this is what it's going to be like when you render it out because I've had people ask me about that and it does not affect the outcome. Now once you're happy with your clip, you want to go to make movie and then you want to click save it to your hard drive. You can upload it directly to YouTube but I never do that because I like to see the end result first. So if there's any changes in my uh, final clip I can go back to the editing and refix it and you click to save the hard drive, you want to click the MP4 format, never click WMV because every YouTuber who does gaming videos who, who makes any vlogs, they always choose MP4, they never choose WMV. WMV is quite confusing to use, it's not the best thing to use for YouTube because you can get the revolutions mixed up, it doesn't always come out the way you want it to and the file size is massive, but MP4 will keep the quality as perfect as possible also as well it will keep it as the lowest file size so you don't have to worry about it being a massive file so you want to click on advanced option and then once this has popped up as you can see I've already got a preset done and I've clicked at the star so that star indicates it's my favorite so when I come back on it after loading up another day it's automatically on here so I don't have to click it manually you wouldn't get that option so what I would recommend is to go into internet HD and then click on customize template and then once you've done that I'm going to show you my one so you guys can check that out if I click on customize template these are basically what you want to copy so I named my template YouTube 1080p 60 frames per second to follow all these settings and then click save so that's saved as a preset but I always tick this box to include in video. I uh, obviously it's already preset to the HD 1080p, and then the profile is high. The frame rate, I, frame rate, I always put to 60. It wouldn't always be on that one. It would be on 30, but you just type in 60, 
um, allows source to adjust frame rate. I've always checked that because some games don't always support six frames per second. But uh, for example, this Crash Bandicoot game was not intentionally um, meant to be in 60 frames per second. And it's also down to your recorder as well. Like I will do a video showing what screen capture I use and the settings I use for it. And if your screen recorder cannot do 60 frames per second. Don't select 60 frames per second to be in your rendering. If your screen capture can only do 30 frames per second, keep it at 30. If you do 60 on this, you will ruin your video. And a lot of people don't understand that. Like the screen capture I got calls in 60 frames per second, so I can render in 60 frames per second. And then after that, you want to keep the uh, the bit rate. I always kept it at this. Um, bit the mid and the maximum and the average and then once you've done that you can go to audio to keep that exactly the same video rendering is at the best the best it can do use project settings um, because that's what we used here on the actual screen earlier on but you go back to video here you have the encoder mode now on the system if you don't know what it is check your uh, GPU and my one is available and what you want to do is render using um, the one that is available so you have OpenCL or CUDA or just render using the CPU only if you have one of, the, of these two that are available select it and you want to click OK I've already got mine saved so you can click save template and then click OK and then once that's done you want to type in your name I'm going to keep it um, titled select where you want to save it to you always keep it to a place where you know when you're going to be and you want to click render and the rendering shall begin and the preview will be going on in the background and that's my rendering settings for the Sony Vegas Movie Studio Platinum 13 so I hope you guys enjoyed this video please let me in the comments section below if it works for you and if you want to see more tutorials from me then let me know because I can get onto them but I will be doing um, my screen capture what I use and the settings I use for it so stick around for that one but until then take care